What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Flow Bash channel. Thank you so much for bringing those smiling faces to another video. So let's just get right into it. I'm gonna show you guys in this video how to rig up your favorite South Florida bait company's most popular lure in a way that's gonna help you catch and land more fish, most specifically tarpon, because they love to throw these lures like you would not believe. And uh, you probably have seen this technique before, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it yourself and rig it up so you lose less baits, lose less fish, and have a better time out in the water. But without further ado, let me roll some footage of last night. I actually went out during a full moon and I utilized that same technique on the mini mullet and had a phenomenal day. Was out for an hour, caught three fish, hightailed it back home and uh, was super satisfied. So let's roll that footage and then I'll get right back into it and show you how to rig this up. So we're out on the water, just my local ICW that's right by my house. And uh, so we're gonna start tossing around that little mini mullet that I showed you guys earlier. So we're gonna be targeting micro tarpon, well, juvenile tarpon on the dock lights, tossing around that little mini mullet that I showed you guys earlier. And I'll go more in depth on how I actually rig that and give you guys a nice close up tutorial so you guys can rig it and start slaying these fish out here too. I'll see you at that first dock and uh, hopefully we can get hooked up on some awesome micro tarp and I love those things. They're so much fun to catch. Let's get after it. hooked up. Bait didn't even really deploy, but not a big deal. He's in the bottom lip, so I'm just going to give him an easy release, send him on his way. All right, there we go. There's the easy release I was looking for. All right, so there's pretty much the aftermath. You can see the bait deployed up the line. I thought it didn't, but it actually did. It was just, I don't know, leverage science, but that's basically how it works. And I was letting that fish, I was getting ready to just Pluck this out with the pliers, but he gave me a good jump. I was slack lined and self released, so worked out perfect. He just broke me. Oh, what the hell was jumping out there in the last? That was kind of yeah, that's not the first time they jumped in the boat. All right, well, that last fish, that was my fault. <laughs> my actually braid, my braid snapped. It's only 10 pound braid. You don't need a ton of heavy tackle for this type of fishing, but it is what it is. Easy release, and uh, we're on to the next one. No hooks in my hand. 
But yeah, the uh, line through is working out perfect. And we're gonna catch a couple more right over here. So obviously, I mean, the results are just phenomenal. The technique works really well. I actually use this in uh, this video right here. You can click that annotation or I have a link in the description of a night I went out with my buddy Luke and the tarpon and snook. Every fish was just absolutely on fire and we didn't lose a single fish except for when they busted us off. Otherwise, not a single one through the hook whatsoever we either caught the fish or got broken off which is pretty rare when <laughs> considering you're going tarpon fishing no matter what size tarpon they are so without further ado let me show you guys how to rig this and i will have links in the description of all the little tools and little tricks that i use so you can buy those below just order right to your home and start rigging this stuff right away because it absolutely works you guys got to get on it so without further ado you're going to need an NLBN, little mullet, mini mullet, or even the big mullet. Just, you know, select your hooks according to the bait size. What I typically like to do is for the little mullet, I use either a size one or one aught treble. That kind of sizes it up perfect with the size of fish you're gonna be catching on this, as well as the bait. As far as the mini mullet is concerned, the size of hook that I like to use is either and this is a four, it's a little on the small side. I like to use a size two treble. Uh, definitely no bigger than a size two, but size four, uh, if, you, if, they, if you have the odd size three, you can use that as well, but typically it's even numbers, two, four, six, etc. So, but that's a size four. It does catch the juvenile tarpon, but sometimes they do throw it, so you might have to actually step up. So typically, that's what you're gonna to wanna to use. You can use a two aught on the big mullet as well. So then the secret sauce that you guys are gonna need are coffee stirring straws. Don't go out and buy these things. Go right to Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. Don't, don't buy these things. But if you can't find them, I got the link in the description. And then you'll have like a, million, a lifetime supply because you can rig like six or seven baits from just one straw. So you'll see that in a second. And then you're gonna need something to poke a hole in your bait. I'm using a chopstick, but you can even use a hook to poke the holes through the baits. Whatever you can find that's just gonna poke a hole, not too big, and uh, you can slide that coffee stirring straw through it. And then you will need some snips, so you can trim up that stirring straw super tight to the body of the bait. And then last but not least, not a requirement, but I do recommend it, is using some sort of mend it or fix a lure so you can coat the straw and when you slide it in, it'll kind of help attach itself to the bait and you'll get even more life out of these baits. They won't get tore up or the straw won't pull out so easily. Um, so that's a little extra on top. But without further ado, I'm gonna zoom in and get you right up close so I show you how to rig these things and you'll be good to go in no time. So I'm gonna rig this up in real time for you guys so you can see how fast and easy it is to do. So I'm gonna use a little mullet because it's a larger example and hopefully it'll be easier for you guys to see. But same process works with the mini mullet or the big mullet. So take your tool that you're gonna use to poke a hole in. Again, it could be a hook chopsticks like I'm using, anything that's just gonna give you a quick hole, not too big. And you're gonna stick it right through the nose and then just on the underside, right through that hook slot right there. Here's a close up so you guys can see what we're working with. 
So we made that hole and then next, take our coffee stirring straw. And if you did it right, you shouldn't have to use a lot of effort and it's gonna go right in just like this. Kind of looks like a ballyhoo. So with that in, you're only sticking it in. I mean, that's maybe quarter to a half inch max. Take your snippers, it could be scissors, whatever you have, and just trim it flush. And this is what we've ended up with. Super flush on the nose, and then underneath, it's barely sticking out. So with that out of the way, we need to make our second hole. This is the secret sauce. You gotta make two holes here. So what I like to do with both the little mullet, the big mullet, and the minis is I find the underside of that hook slot right here, and I go directly in between the anal fin and the hook slot at a little more shallow than a 45, but pretty close. And we're not going all the way through the bait. Again, we're sticking this in about a half inch maximum. This should give you an idea of the angle we're working with right here. And then pop that out, take our straw, and go right back in. And then you'll feel the resistance of when it stops. And we're gonna trim that off again. It's not paramount that it's super flush, but it definitely helps your situation here. It looks exactly like what it looks like. It's, there's a little, a little poo hole right there in the mullet, but that's what it is. So we're pretty much almost done. At this point, I like to take my mend it or fix a lure and don't go ham with this because this will actually eat away the bait if you do too much. So I just like to give it a little brush right there. Again, wiping off the excess, I give the front a brush and then underneath a couple dabs right there. And that's gonna help the straw stay in place and not pull out. And with the magic of editing, we let this cure for just a few minutes and uh, it's looking good to go. So from here, basically, you're done. Now, if you have your leader already tied onto your line, that's when you're gonna drive it through the head of the bait and out the bottom here. And then you would tie on your hook and then jam it into the back. But in my example, I already have a leader already made up. So instead, I'm gonna do the reverse. I'm gonna go at the head of the lure, I'm gonna slide my line through, out the nose, pull it up. And then what you wanna do when you orient the hook, you can see how the eye of the hook is pointed straight up and down in line with the top and bottom of the bait. You don't wanna do it to where the eye is parallel to the bait, if that makes any sense. I'll give you some close-ups. So if you take a look here, you see the orientation of the eye in relation to the bait and the hook. This is no bueno. What you wanna make sure is when you shove the barb into your straw, that the eye is in this orientation and that allows you to bury it into that hook slot and everything's nice in line and ready to go. All right, we're all rigged up. So what did that take? Just like two, three minutes tops. I mean, it gets even faster the more of these that you actually do. So another little secret that I'll give you guys that I personally do is I take some pliers right here and I actually pinch and rub down the barbs. So kind of what this does is you know, you pinch down the barb and you rock it back and forth. It really flattens it out and kind of files it down to pretty much nothing. But what that's gonna do is, one, it's better for the fish. But two, most importantly, it's a lot better for you because I know a lot of people have reservations of grabbing a tarpon or a snook with a treble in its mouth. It's definitely sketchy, especially a tarpon. But with that, at least the barb's pinched down. So if you do get hooked, you can pull it out with ease. And of course, 
the most important thing is it's, it's better for the fish, guys. It just is. I know a lot of people have some negative thoughts about using treble hooks for catching tarpon. I've been doing it for the better part of a year now, especially with these big one-aught and two-aught trebles. Same thing with the smaller ones, and I've been able to retrieve almost every single single one. The only time I haven't been able to retrieve it is if the fish bust me off. And then with the barbs pinched down, the chances of that hook actually coming dislodged increases dramatically. So I highly recommend you do pinch down the barbs and you'll have a good time. I still have not had one of these fish actually throw the lure, except maybe, maybe once or twice. But this is out of like hundreds of tarpon. So I highly recommend you guys try it. But anyway, thanks for watching this video again. Links in the description of all my little tools and little trickeries that I do when I'm rigging this thing. And trust me guys, get out there. You guys are gonna have an absolute blast. And before I forget, if you guys are interested in booking a freshwater exotic fishing charter, hit me up at flowbass.com. I'm a fishing guy to have been for the past two years now and I absolutely love it. It's my passion in life. So if you guys are interested in booking a trip, you can do that below. I am gonna start opening up Miami Shrimp Run Tarpon Trips towards the middle of January 2024. We'll run those all the way through April because that's kind of when the shrimp are running out of the Miami River. And uh, you can potentially catch a giant like this. Oh, jump, 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 jump. Oh my God, dude, he's just... Oh! <laughs> My God, Did you get that? that's a giant. Did you get that? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Now George is gonna save his fish. <laughs> Look at that rod, man. That's an advertisement for the Shimano Terramar right there. Oh my God, this is a dinosaur. Put the phone down. All right, guys, here we go. Going for the face grab. Check back in in a second. All right, we got our hands on this fish. Guys, this thing <laughs> this is a is monster. A dinosaur. This is a monster. I do not retract my previous statement. This is a 150. I'm not, I'm not saying it. It's big. Big. Oh, he's ready. Goodbye. He's good. It's good. Nice. Nice. Yep, that, that was a big fish. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. I will see you in that next one. Peace out.